Here we go, Real Housewives of Orange County, Season 18, Episode 2, and a gossip dump, and a few announcements. So Bling is the New Black sent me this hilarious shirt. It says, free hugs, just kidding, don't touch me. I've been wearing it as a cover-up at the beach because it's really long on me, but I love the cut of the tank top. See that tank top? It really makes your arms look thin and your shoulders look great in it. I don't know if you can see it in the picture, but I'll try to make it so you can. See the cut? It looks good. Now this kind of neck, I've never had this before. It actually looks better on me. My arms look better. <laughs> uh, <laughs> put Dana in the coupon code, I get half and you get free shipping in the US. Bling is the new black. Get in there. I put the link in the description if you want to get. There's so many cute sayings, American flags, rainbows, all sorts of fun stuff on there. If you use my name, works on anything in there and I sure could use the dough because you can see I'm still in the hotel three months later. <laughs> Crazy. Quick note for the patrons: the collections are all done that we voted on last week. Paranormal, Vatican, Marilyn Monroe, best of Kyle Richards and Mauricio Umansky gossip, uh, Venivia lawsuits. I mean, just get in there and have a ball, you guys. Really have a ball. And there'll be more added this week. I'm going to do a poll tomorrow that asks you what order I should do the new batch in. Okay, so think of tonight's show as a podcast because it's a bit long. They've been packing these episodes with tea and I've got so much gossip to tell you. So just kind of listen. It's season 18, episode two we're doing. Real Housewives of Orange County. So like clockwork this week, an article drops in Us Weekly about Jennifer Petrani. It would seem that great timing, she settled her lawsuit with her husband, I think his name's William. William got a lot and she got very little and there was no mention of her family's business, which really made me wonder if this family business was even real. He ended up walking away with Padrani Construction, their family home that was worth a half million dollars, several cars, and honestly, everybody was reporting her big payout that she got on her settlement or whatever, and it wasn't that big. Let me show you. Not for Orange County. So this is how everybody reported it. Real Housewives of Orange County star Jennifer Padrani awarded six-figure lump sum child support and divorce settlement. You know, some people really made a big deal out of this lump sum. Well, let me show you how much this lump sum was. Oh, by the way, some of you asked what my haircut is, and I want to tell you, you remember Jennifer Aniston's haircut back from Friends? I still do that haircut. <laughs> Just longer, if you want to copy it. Yeah, this one. And, and hey, listen, you guys, if it ain't broken, don't fix it, okay? <laughs> Maybe Bravo needs to learn there that. There you go. Jennifer was awarded two bank accounts with no amounts disclosed, so I can't imagine it's too much. A retirement account, that's good. And all interest in her company, Devi Rebel Yoga. Whatever, that's not worth anything. William agreed to pay Jennifer a one-time sum of 267811 quote, in order to equalize the division of the community assets and debts. Notice the word and debts, or the wor two words and debts. Uh, that says to me that some of this money has to be used to pay something that's back owed. I don't know what that could be, if it's back rent or other things, because we know she's had a bunch of financial issues. But if so, a lot of that money could be eaten up. The reason people do lump sums, by the way, is they are scared in some respects sometimes that their actual child support or alimony won't be paid. So they hope to get some sort of additional compensation up front that kind of guarantees that they're gonna be okay. Now she wasn't even able to feed her kids, which makes me pissed and upset. William got off pretty easy. Jennifer will receive another $1,735 per month in spousal support from William. I mean, that's not a lot. And guess what? If she marries Ryan, he won't be paying it anymore. 
They can't say bad things to the children about each other. William will pay Jennifer $4,674 per month in child support for the four kids. Employment-related child care costs shall be split equally between the parties, the judge noted. So, I mean, he is not paying a lot for the amount of children that she has, uh, I mean, given she's getting way more than most women because most, not most, but a lot of men like mine, for example, head for the hills or over state lines where it's very difficult for you to be able to collect child support and they never pay a dollar. And you end up with this illustrious order that, by the way, can't ever go away and just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. There's no statute of limitation on child support, but these guys learn how to get around the passport, get around the driver's license, and not pay, and jump states and make it really hard for the woman to get her money. Take it from me, as I say on most things. Uh, anyway, so I hope he does end up paying, since she can't say anything bad about him in front of the children. I'll say it for William. Step up, buddy. I mean, to be fair, a rental in Laguna, for example, is $6,395 per month for a three-bedroom in Orange County. And it goes up. Like, this was a, a properly priced one that wants to rent. So if she's only bringing in, like, 4000 plus a little more for money, you know, it's going to make it tough. She's going to have to get like a two bedroom or one bedroom for all of her children. And I'm not sure Ryan's going to be able to support her in the future. It's going to depend what happens in his case right now, helping the prosecution in whatever way he is, which hopefully he's getting immunity, but it's probably hurting his earning power, I would imagine, because we don't really know what he did for a job. I was shocked about the gambling allegation just because I really thought this was Ryan Boyajian's job, he was a mortgage consultant. And now obviously, he, if he had, runs into trouble, he's gonna have a difficult time doing this job depending on what he has to you know, say he did, right? Because you have a fiduciary duty in certain roles in, I think, mortgages, I'm not sure. But it's not gonna make his job easy, so I hope he helps the prosecution and nothing happens to him so he can help Jennifer Pedrani get back on her feet again. To be fair, Jennifer Pedrani allegedly cheated on Williams. Like she was in a loveless marriage and denies that she did that, but pretty much everyone in Orange County believes she did. And it's not a great look. And if I was him and I was scorned, I also would wanna punish her, but don't punish the kids. Oh, by the way, Taylor Armstrong looked pretty messy on her video going into a Rolling Stones concert. Did you see that? The Rolling Stones met other than, and we're about to go down into the pit. So look at all these people that are here to celebrate the Rolling Stones, but we're going in deep, going to the pit. Let's go, Gemma. I always support OC. Gina Kyo because she is really cool and we did a show together a few shows actually and I just really like her she's so no nonsense and I caught this with Vicky the other day because of course I wanted to support her and give her show a watch and look at what they when said when he was kissing somebody else at quiet woman while he was with Shannon <gasps> she was in the He's a cheater. I talked. it's like does he not know who we are that we're housewives and that we know Shannon's in the bathroom but also Alexis Bellino dropped this on her Insta. I know whatever I'll write, I'll be painted as the mean girl, but I'll gladly take the public beating if it will calm the storms. Shannon, your obsession with John needs to end. I know my relationship with John has been a saving grace for you as you have been mentioning our names in every interview in an effort to bypass all accountability for your arrest. I ask you with all sincerity to please stop exploiting us and your manipulative sympathy. And she says, let John and I be happy and you know we want the best for you or some bullshit. Boy, Alexis Bellino really wants to be on Housewives. You know why? Because she's a friend of and she's going through all this. And to write that essay, girl, just be quiet. Just be say nothing and be mute this season. And then, you know, surprise everybody at the end with a statement. God, who's your publicist?
Meanwhile, Alex Baskin's thinking, oh, this is a dream. It's too good to be true that this woman was willing to do this for the 10 bucks we're paying This also happened today. Real Housewives of Orange County star Gina Kirschenheider's boyfriend Travis Mullen settles restraining order battle with ex-wife. So basically, Travis Mullen drops the restraining order that he has against Megan Mullen in return for her doing drug tests. I'll get into the details of it. The ex has agreed neither party will be under the influence of any non-prescription medications or illegal drugs while having physical custody of the minor children. In addition, Travis and Megan agreed that Megan will submit to a drug screening test within six hours of a request by Travis. Travis agrees to advance the cost of said screening test. The deal states if Megan fails any drug screening test, her physical custody with the minor children shall be immediately suspended and she shall reimburse Travis, geez, for the cost of said screening test. Travis agrees he shall only request a drug screening test during the times Megan has care and custody of the minor children or immediately after returning the children. Further, he has to say why he wants the test, like what evidence does he have that she might be under the influence. We can't weaponize this. And also they can't disparage each other on social media anymore or any of their significant others either can't do it. So that's what came out today. I guess Gina and Travis are working it out. And now for the recap. All right, so episode two is a bit discombobulated, so I'll do my best to highlight it for you. Shannon Bador and Alexis end up, you know, having this big moment at the end of the fight where Shannon's like, thanks for taking my boyfriend, and Alexis is basically like, you're welcome. They go inside, and then everybody sits down to lunch, and everybody is so hungry. They don't want to really respect Heather's sort of way she's bringing out the food, which is very, like, you know, hoity-toity. And they're making complaints, whatever. We see that happen. Then there's this thing called the money booth. And Jennifer Padrani, it has now come out at this party, has been evicted from her house. She owed a lot of back rent, has numerous problems, might not be able to afford her car. And of course, she has many children. And so she's making jokes like, well, maybe I should go into this money machine, which is where Heather goes in to give everybody questions and get, you know, my mortgage. And everybody has a big joke about that. And then they go in one by one and they get their question. And really the standout answers to the questions is Alexis says, I want to make up with Shannon Bedore and I strive as a goal in my friendships to reconnect with Shannon and move forward with me with John Jansen and her without him, essentially. Like, she'll get over it. And then the women make snide comments, like, not while you're still sleeping with him and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so that happens. Uh, And then Alexa sits down at lunch and she's teasing Shannon in a way about John. She talks about the ring. She says, it's not a promise ring. She says it's not an engagement ring. The women are like, wait, you said it was a promised ring on Instagram. And she said, no, it's a promised ring, like with a D, and that's not a promised ring. So I was like, what does she mean? Does she mean that John Jansen promised her a ring and then finally gave it to her, like kind of in a negative way? Or did she just mean like a past tense promise ring, which is really like you dedicating your like heart to somebody, but you're not getting married. So that was all very confusing and strange and weird. And then Jesus Juggs gets all into her religion and she brings that in. And the women are like, oh, is she really religious? And everyone goes, I guess so. And that's what happens. Shannon Bedore, meanwhile, gets upset at this conversation and she walks out the door and Tamara Judge gets up and runs after Shannon and is like, are you okay? She doesn't really run after Shannon to help Shannon. She runs after Shannon to have a moment to fight with Shannon. So Tamara's like, listen, you've been lying for years. You're always such a liar. And Shannon is like, you weren't there for me. You sent text messages and commented on my Instagram like that you were pro John Jansen and Alexis Bellino's relationship. That's such a backstabbing mood. 
and then you told me to grow up when I called you out on it and like it's crazy and Tamara's like no you're a liar and I'm you know punishing you for being a liar uh, basically she was like it's not even the three amigos show breaking up it's this other stuff so it's just they're totally broken down at this point what's going on you're walking around going thank me for the show and it's oh, like I it was said that shit. okay then all did i say you that? want to sit down i'm not going to stand in a no, hallway i actually don't okay i i don't okay. you're not a good person okay all right you've done horrible things to me shannon lies about everything shannon all you have to do is apologize and we can move forward Kimmy, okay, do you know that Tamara just said to me Multiple people have told me that you said I'm a horrible friend, that I'm having ego. I did say you had an ego. I did. But she goes, no, I don't want to sit down with you. You're a horrible person. Talk about kicking someone when they're down, you know? Her makes like some hokey ending of the lunch where she's like, I hope you guys leave with a smile on your face. Of course, no one is. So Gina Kirschenheider is the most popular housewife at the Bravo LA Live event. I was told by a bunch of fans who knew. She's sneaky like that, I guess, because Heather Dubrow was there and Tamara Judge and not as popular as she was, I guess, with the fans. Thought you'd find that interesting. So we see Katie, Jennifer Padrani, and Shannon hanging out together in the first scene. They just tell you some highlights. John Jansen got his teeth done and that's why he's always smiling, not because of Alexis. That's what Shannon thinks. And then we find out that Gina is of course upset with Jennifer Padrani because she vouched to a real estate broker that Jennifer could afford this expensive house. Her dad co-signed and Jennifer didn't pay the rent and got evicted from the house. So that realtor will no longer help Gina Kirschenheider in her deals and it really hurt her in real life. Like she really couldn't get a deal done because of this. And she makes sure they, they break the fourth wall in an argument later in the show and you hear Gina say no in like for real, meaning it really happened, not just for show. And Jennifer Padrani, um, you know, she doesn't seem to recognize how difficult this is for Gina. And so, yeah, this is the kind of gonna be the theme argument through most of the episode tonight is Gina versus Jennifer Padrani because Jennifer gets evicted and Gina vouched for her. Now, obviously it's come, you know, to this owner probably heard that Jennifer was a housewife and when Gina said she could afford it, they assumed she could, right? So anyway, um, that's going on. Then we find out about the new, uh, the new housewife, Katie Fletcher, and she plays it on the show kind of funny. She basically introduces all of her children. She's Katie Soup. I 100% felt different growing up than my family. We didn't talk about anything Korean. We didn't eat Korean food. We didn't involve ourselves in the culture, but Kylie has a big interest in her Korean roots. She's taught herself to read Korean and speak Korean. So now we'll go out to eat at a Korean restaurant and my daughter will order for me. I was like, this is embarrassing. Matt and I only have one son together. His name is Bandon. He's six. What are you doing, bud? Oh my God. In my first marriage, I had three kids. My 17 and a half year old son, Gavin, is in San Diego. He wanted to finish out the school year in San Diego, which I totally understand. And then my 14 year old son, Max, lives in Atlanta with his dad full time. Tell us about this boy. He's over six foot. And then my daughter, when I gave birth to Kylie, it was on my 20th birthday, and I said, yes, I beat teenage pregnancy. We could care less on how Okay, you... well, mom raised me saying men six foot and under are just friends. Because we're, we're tall women. women. Kylie and Matt have a very strong relationship. You guys Funny she doesn't bring up that she was on Say Yes to the Dress and has been on reality TV before. That are making John Jansen smile, but Jesus Jugs is pretty cute. So it could be a combo of Jesus Jugs and the new teeth. We don't need to talk about me anymore. Let's talk about you. You play golf. Um, I try. Yeah. My husband plays golf like every day. It's our whole life. I mean, if you came to our house, all the artwork, like it's oh, it's all golf. It's all golf because that's how we met. How many uh, years wow. have you guys been married? We just celebrated seven in seven October. Seven years. He's amazing. He was a travel reporter for Golf Channel, and oh, I was wow. a travel reporter for a different golf network. I went into journalism because since I was a little girl, I wanted to be a weather girl. Then I was like, that's too scary. So I went into sports journalism. I just don't want to play. My husband wants to give me lessons and that will just end in divorce. <laughs> 
I'm thinking I should take golf up. Yes. I told you guys that she was going to be the reason they go to the golf course where Shannon gets hit on by the guy, but not really. He didn't want to date her. Remember him? That's coming up. Absolutely. Because that was a lot for me. Was that your first? That was your. That was the first time meeting Heather for you. I saw Heather at Sutton's Christmas party. She turned and stared at me, and then looked away, and I was like, okay. Oh. How are you? Heather does that a lot. I don't. You know, I never know. It's like what way is the wind blowing? You know, I never know. Tamara told me a lot of things that Heather said and did. You never repeated anything. You told people Shannon and John's relationship. It's not good, but I can't tell you what it is because it's in the vault. So then we find out that Jennifer Padrani's fiance, Ryan, is a mortgage guy who also does real estate development, doesn't really do mortgages anymore, but he seems to do nothing all day and she can't really figure it out. Now, remember, when this is shot, he hasn't been involved or implicated in this crazy scam indictment which calls out that he gambles regularly and does something with this money. I We don't know why, like wash it, make it worth more. I, I don't understand what Ryan does, but it's clear neither does Jennifer Padrani, to be fair, <laughs> okay? So now let me tell you some quick highlights from Watch What Happens Live before I continue the recap. Um, Jennifer Padrani believes that Shannon changed and she truly is you know not drinking and taking care of herself even though Tamara's saying otherwise on the show but now at least this is jennifer's take she also said that she thinks that john jansen and bellino will end up getting married and that they're in it for the long haul from her interaction with them as a couple it was very different she said than john's interaction with shannon so she really believes that that's going to last. So I thought I'd share that with you. Now, Ryan didn't go in the audience and watch What Happens Live, which is really odd. He just stayed in the back, like hiding. Strange, because you know they usually have the significant other or family in the audience. But again, I think this has to do with his legal problem. And Jennifer seemed to kind of give us the feeling like it was a lot of noise, but there's no, like, serious stuff happening with it so I don't know it's like she's making it she's kind of mitigating it down like it's not a big deal what's happened to Ryan sort of odd but maybe that's what her PR agent told her to do because I'm sure she has one I'd say she's spending all of her Bravo money on her glam her beauty and her publicist so then the women do a flag football get together, just three of them, Shannon, Emily, and Gina. And then they all sit down and Shannon has a heart to heart with Gina and apologizes because she's like, I was really hard on you for years about your DUI and then I got one and I'm like a hypocrite and now I know what you were going through and I'm really sorry and I'm really, really sorry. And then Gina senses it's a real apology so she forgives Shannon and she says, I know how hard it is what you're going through right now. I've been through it and I'm not gonna kick you down because you're finally being honest and owning that you're not perfect and you're not on like some pedestal. You're like everybody else. You put your pants on one leg at a time. So then we see Jennifer Padrani's parents and they come to visit her at Ryan's house because she's now living at Ryan's house because she has bad credit. She has terrible press. She's struggling and she's still trying to depict herself as a real housewives of Orange County because she doesn't want to lose that job too. So anyway, this is going to become a weakness for her later in the show because her castmates are going to call it out. Although she did say on Watch What Happens Live that she barters her makeup. So she gets her makeup done free in return for promoting the makeup artist or something. And so she doesn't really pay for that. So even though it's called out on the show, it's not like something she actually pays for. I don't know if I totally buy that, but that's what she said. Uh, why don't I buy it? Because you have to do your makeup a lot, like every day, and it's usually you gotta pay someone something to do it that much, right? And she does have all couture clothing, and I'm kinda thinking to myself, maybe you should sell some of that if you're really hard up. You know, as much as she's screaming it on this episode, it could also have been the edit. You know, they just kept bringing it up, bringing it up. 
So anyway, we see her hanging out with her parents and the kids are so happy to see them. And she starts to cry and she said, she says she's like 47 years old and she still can't support herself and she's so sorry and her dad bailed her out and she's sorry that he lost so much money and you know all of this which now makes a lot of sense as to the settlement that i read you earlier my show tonight because remember there was that word debts and so what i think happened is william paid her that lump sum so she could repay her dad back for some of the money he had to settle with the landlord on that eviction lease that they had right so i think that's what happened i don't think she got that money i think that went to settling her dad who paid some of the lease william tried to do right by that. anyway ryan doesn't ever use his dishwasher we see some of the dynamics between him and the kids and her it's all very awkward it feels awkward but maybe who knows it isn't now ryan boyajian has two children of his own so they are not showing them on camera but they're there like he knows how to be a father for sure and he's close with his kids now i did notice tamra was not used that much by the producers on tonight's show which might not be a great thing for tamra so we see katie jennifer padrani and shannon hanging out together in the first scene so shannon and heather get together and heather says i never said bad things about you but i heard you said that you wanted to gang up on me at the reunion last year is that true and shannon's like no i didn't say that but you can tell shannon's not totally telling the truth and she's like look tamra told me all this gossip that you said about me so i was pissed at you and i wanted to kind of take you out a little bit at the reunion she doesn't say it like that but pretty much and then heather's like well i never said that so so we're kind of seeing a shift where heather dubrow and shannon are going to now bond and go after tamra together <laughs> hmm so then we see the big scene, which was, I think, a real scene. Like, this was a real fight. And it's Gina Kirschenheider against Jennifer Padrani. They meet at this coffee shop called Lola's. And Gina is like, I'm really pissed at you. And she was really amped up. So she's just talking, talking, talking. And Jennifer's very relaxed. But basically, Jennifer's like, how dare you? tell people my business as a realtor knowing that i'm getting evicted and stuff you shouldn't be gossiping about my business as a realtor it, you know which is a direct attack on gina because actually in la talking like that by a realtor is a really bad thing okay so like i know that that is really upsetting gina somewhere right now she's watching this, this, the show this week and um anyway so that's what jennifer attacks with and gina attacks with like you need to grow up like you can't pay your rent you can't protect your children you're an unstable mom you're totally selfish right you left your husband because you were unhappy and all this stuff to cheat with ryan you didn't even think of your kids you didn't even think what it was going to do for the financial situation you're making bad financial decisions you're you're like impulsive like your yoga studio move to the big mansion all this stuff and you can't afford it so you're irresponsible and she goes on and on and on and actually i'm thinking to myself gina really thinks this and feels this and this has been something the women have definitely discussed behind the scenes big time and gina's calling it out now jennifer padrani doesn't seem that phased by it all she's like upset a little but not much so what I realized on tonight's show is that Jennifer Padrani very well may be a little bit wired weird. Seriously. Now, full disclosure, I don't like Gina because she came against me with Emily. And I haven't heard great things about Emily either from people. So that's why I'm not that big into that little clique. But since she's a fan favorite, we'll go for it. I do want to say one thing that I think is weird. Jennifer does seem to make impulsive and sort of ungrown up decisions, which either makes her a total brat or she's just not that bright. But she seems bright and very articulate when she talks and she's very good at picking up what people say. But I now 
I was sent gossip about her from people in Orange County that said she's, uh, I know she comes off on the show as like likable and stuff, but that she's not what she seems. Like she's very selfish. And I'm now really seeing it come out on episode two. You know, at first I felt like, okay, she's selfish for cheating, but you know, maybe it was a really bad situation, this and that. But now we're seeing numerous mistakes that she's making and she's putting her kids in jeopardy and stuff and she can cry all she wants, but she's still doing it. And I don't know, I just, something off with her for sure. And her reactions to things are odd. She doesn't get upset. It's like, it's not phasing her. So it makes me feel like she's not feeling things. It's weird. Here's one I quickly pulled up from the dishing drama Dana Patreon. In 2021, Emily and Gina were at a brunch with Tamra's ex-best friend Ricky talking mad shit about Tamrat. She was never a fan of Tamrat's and she constantly plays chess for the show. She does bare minimum because she wants to stay on the show for the fame. Her in-laws pay for everything they have. The only positive is that she's 1000% a good mother. Gina hated Tamrat too. The show was so manufactured and fake. The whole thing is not real. Emily will do anything to stay on the show. By the way, I couldn't figure out why Emily and Gina out of the blue came for me. And now I know. It just clicked. It's because Emily's been talking to Tamra and Teddy to do their show. And Teddy hates me because we've had beef publicly before. So I bet you that Teddy talk crap to Emily and then Emily came for me publicly to make Teddy happy because he knew, she knew she was going to be doing this show with her and she was going to be making money for Teddy and Tamara. Hmm. It's all becoming clear. I wonder how Tamara will feel about that gossip I just posted since Emily was talking smack about her. And I just can't end this video any better. So we're going to leave it there. <laughs> like, subscribe, and hit the notification button.